Rockatai Hawa, Rockatai Hawa Sha, Rockatai Hawa, Rockatai Hawa Sha. All praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Sha, Bahashem Rikakadash. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Sha being the name of His only begotten Son, who they eagerly called Jesus Christ. Now, when you're talking about uh, this great tribulation and the end of the world, when you look at it from the Christian mindset, they looking at it as, okay, this is what Yahweh said would be the sign for the last days. But Yahweh and all of the so-called New Testament writers or Israelites who was writing those uh, epistles in the New Testament, these people was not uh, creating some new things and new revelations from the Lord. See, they was the generation that was going to come that was written in Joel. That's why Apostle Peter, when the Holy Spirit fell on him, on the day of Pentecost, he stood up and he started reading the book of Joel because Joel was prophesying that in the future, um, after him, it was going to be Israelites to um, prophesy. And these uh, Israelites was going to be pretty much um, breaking down these prophecies and telling the other Israelites what would come to pass. And so when you're talking about this, the signs of the end of the world and the great tribulation that was coming, it was all prophesied uh, through the prophets. Mind you, let's get Yahweh's testimony. See, show you how important prophecy is and how important the prophets is. Revelations chapter 19 verse 10. I'm going to just get the last sentence in this. It says, For the testimony of Yahweh is the spirit of prophecy. See, his testimony, when you're thinking about Yahweh and, and everything that uh, encompasses uh, his purpose is this prophecy because these prophecies also is what proves that God has uh, let's get that that it's a God that God exists see because man can't do what God can do this Isaiah 43 let me get verse uh, 10 or 11 no, Salaki. Verse 9, it says, Let all the nations be gathered together, and let the people uh, be assembled, who among them can declare this, and show us former things. See, who is um, in power that can show us the former things? See, they can't show us the former things. See, he didn't want to preserve this word and preserve the history because if it, were, if it was up to the world rulers, they try to destroy history. See, they try to get rid of the history and rewrite it to make them look like they did something good. Then when you go to uh, chapter 46, verse 10, it says, Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. So he's showing how these nations and these people can't uh, bring up some stuff in the past. They can't understand what's going on in the past. And also, they're not going to understand what's going to go on in the future. This is what the prophecies is going to do. Okay. When you get Amos 3 and 7, mind you, Amos 2 and 11 say the children of Israel was the ones he was going to pick these prophets out of. It says, 
Verse 7, surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So he revealing his secrets. See, and those secrets is something that the nations can't bring up. They can't go into the past or the future and bring up some of the secrets that the Lord have um, established with the prophets. So when you go into that Matthew, let's go to Matthew and see how Yahweh is talking about these last days. Is at verse 3 it says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? Okay, so the, the Christian mind said they know about this, and the, the signs is verse 21. It says, For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be so they read that and they say oh this is talking about the great tribulation for all mankind see this is the great tribulation that uh the christ talked about that the christians gonna have to go to no 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 this is not no great tribulation for no christian because this is a prophecy that yahweh shot is bringing out see he's not bringing out some new thing that he's prophesying about and no other prophet prophesied about because this was with the prophets concerning the nation of israel when you go into let's see one of the the biggest prophets that's being known uh let's go into daniel daniel chapter 1 verse 12 it tells you what the prophecy was going to be about Daniel was all about the Israelites. He wasn't talking about no heathens in no shape, form, or fashion. Uh, 12 and 1, it said, At that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which stand for the children of your people. See, this is what the angel is saying to Daniel. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that time. See, this is what Yahweh is quoting, quoting because, mind you, he uh, talked about the abomination of desolation out of Daniel. So he was connected and, and certifying the book of Daniel. Okay. And it was going to be that the, the nation of Israel was going to be that elect that was going to have a time of trouble that was never seen in their nation. And it says, and at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. So it's not going to be these people um, just because they don't join some church, they're going to get delivered. Now when you're going to the next prophet, what other prophet? Prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah 30 and 7. It says, Alas, for that, for that day is great so that none is like it it is even the time of jacob's trouble but he shall be saved out of it so this is a time that none like it see it's a day that no other um people done went through and the nation of israel never seen because you're going to daniel 9 it tells you daniel 9 and 11 it says, yeah, all Israel have transgressed your law, even the pardon, even by the pardon, that they might not obey your voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. And he have confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil and for under the whole heaven have not been done as it has been done upon Jerusalem okay so it's, it's, this stuff is only happening to the Israelites because they sinned against their God okay so then you go to Isaiah Isaiah talks about this Jacob's trouble and he talks about this when, it, when it's concerning 
their redeemer and their savior. It says, so, verse 19, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood and the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. So when they come in like a flood, this is the Jacob's trouble. This is when Jacob is in trouble because their enemies is coming in to them like a flood. Verse 20 it says, and the redeemer shall come to Zion. So he's going to come to Jacob. And to them, that's in Jacob, that turn from transgression in Jacob, says the Lord. Okay, so this great tribulation is about the Israelites. Look at verse 21. And as for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord, that my spirit is upon thee, and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart out of your mouth, nor out of the mouth of your seed, or out of the mouth of your seed seed, says the Lord from hence and forever. So he was given this covenant with the Israelites forever, man. And he wanted this to be in their mouth forever because this is what it's going to boil down to. Jacob being in trouble and the enemy coming in like a flood. And mainly the enemy coming in like a flood to destroy the two-third Negroes and the Spanish and Native Americans that don't want to hearken unto his word and that don't want to hearken unto his commandments. See, this was the whole part of the curse. And so when you go into that great tribulation, this is talking about the Israelites. Not talking about somebody else. Second Ezra 16 and uh, I think 69. It says, uh, no, 7. It says, for there shall be in every place in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. This is that great tribulation. Because it's going to be an insurrection on those that fear the Lord. Only Jacob is going to fear the Lord. These other nations are wicked. And they're not going to uh, hearken unto the word. They say they shall be like mad men, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. See, this is what's going to be done to Jacob not going to be done to the Christian church, Jehovah Wickedness, or the Muslim mosque, a Buddha and Hindu and any other kind of e Egyptology and the Egyptians, the, the, the Dead Sea Scroll and all, I mean the Dead, the Book of the Dead and all that crap. This is for the Israelites. This is who the Lord is dealing with. Now let's get uh, 3 and 36 just to clarify. Uh, second Ezra 3 and 36 he say you shall find that Israel have that Israel by name have kept your precepts and not the heathen see ain't no heathen Christian church that's going to sit up and um, keep the precepts because we seeing that they ain't they can't break down nothing to you and they ain't going according to prophecy everything they talking about is some new mess that's coming out of their heart and we know that's a bunch of garbage now, um, let's see if Jacob's trouble. Okay. Now, let me get four and 22. So this brings up another issue. It says, um, say the punishment of your iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Edom, O daughter of Zion. So the Israelites don't went through their punishment. He will no more carry you away into captivity. That's why the Israelites is in captivity and slavery unto these people. He will visit your iniquity, daughter of Edom. He will discover your sin. Now, what was going to be some of the sin? What was going to happen to the Israelites? What would their enemies be doing coming in as a flood? It says, they hunt our steps that we cannot go on our streets. Our end is near. Our days are fulfilled for our end is come. See, this is the end when Jacob is in trouble. And he's going to be looking for another nation to save him from these Edomites or the, even the Edomite nation to save him. 
but they not. They're going to hunt the steps, and they're going to come in like a flood. They say, our persecutors are swifter than the eagles of heaven. This is how they're going to be coming in like a flood. And then it tells you who who is this nation that is talking about, Edom. The nation of Edom is the one bringing the great, great tribulation to the Israelites. That's why Yahweh shall call them the Obama, the abomination of desolation. Let's get that. Daniel. I mean, not Daniel, Salaki. It's in Daniel 9, but Yahweh shall brought it back up. Uh, um, uh, Matthew 24. What is it? Matthew 24 and 15. It said, When ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by the pro Daniel the prophet, Stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. So this not only is it for the, these Edomites going in there in 70 AD, this is talking about they're going to be in there in the end of the world. And this is where the, the war is going to pop off there and, and start drawing these other people in. It's already done popped off and started. But, uh, Jeremiah 49 and um Jeremiah 49 and I think it maybe 17 or 18 and it talks about what these Edomites would be doing okay because it said um something specifically about well, how the war would pop off. And I think it's um, verse 20. It says, Therefore hear the counsel of the Lord that he have taken against Edom and his purposes that he have purpose against the inhabitants of to Timon, surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their inhabitation desolate with them. So the least of the flock is those Amalekites over there in the land. See the abomination of desolation. When they over there, that's when all heck is gonna pop off. They gonna draw out everybody else into this World War Three, into this Jacob trouble. See. And this is what the focus is on. It's not focusing on the whole world being in trouble. It's that this is when Jacob is going to be in trouble. This is what uh, the focus is going to be all about. And it's not about a Christian church being in trouble or a Muslim being in trouble. See, it's about the children of Israel. I just want to bring that out. All praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashem Yahweh the ones to the elders pushing the truth, peace to the elect worldwide. Um, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, the descendants of slaves scattered around the globe on slave ships and through many captivities. Our kingdom is at hand. Shalom.